Hey guys, it is NCS Fan 001 here for episode 6 of Let's Make Fallout Food or Fallout Recipes or whatever you want to call it. Almost like that was a, supposed to be a Let's Play intro. Today's recipe is something that's actually recognizable from the series because it's been a couple times since we've done that. Blamco Macaroni and Cheese. Uh, so it says, thanks to our partnership with Blamco, every vault is stocked with everyone's favorite Blamco macaroni and cheese. However, in case a mole rat infestation affects the boxes we've stockpiled, we've provided this recipe so you'll never be without your favorite dish. Uh, this is an easy difficulty recipe with a prep time of 30 minutes, a cook time of 30 minutes, five servings, it pairs well with roasted vegetables. And it is apparently going to boost my agility for one hour. Uh, I feel like it's going to make you more sluggish than anything. As for the ingredients, we need a pound of elbow macaroni that has been cooked. It's currently cooking, so it'll be done around the time that the cheese sauce is done. Uh, two medium carrots that are chopped. I'm not doing that because I don't want carrots in my macaroni and cheese. I have never heard of carrots in macaroni and cheese. Uh, a cup and a half of whole milk, a uh, half a cup of heavy cream, two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, a uh, quarter cup all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of ground mustard, two teaspoons of garlic powder, a uh, quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper, five tablespoons of unsalted butter, uh, eight ounces of sharp cheddar cheese that has been shredded, four ounces of shredded Fontina cheese, salt and pepper. So this is going to be, I think, the most complicated recipe I've made so far. So the first step is all about fill a medium pot with water and bring it to a boil, add the carrots, cover, reduce, blah, blah, blah. We are not going to do that. So instead, our first step, using this pot that I have used before, we are going to do the milk, heavy cream, and Worcestershire sauce that will be blended with the carrots until smooth. So I will be back in a moment as that is being poured in. Okay, first up the cup and a half of whole milk. That thing was a lot harder to open than it should have been. Don't usually drink whole milk. I don't drink a lot of milk anymore anyway. All right, next up, half a cup of heavy whipping cream or just heavy cream. I don't really think there's much of a difference. And we top this step off with two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, or I think that's how you pronounce it. Oh, right, I should probably open whatever the little paper tab is inside of this. I don't usually use Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce for anything, so yeah. This will be teaspoon number one. Spilled a little bit into the pot, but that's okay. A little bit extra spice isn't going to hurt anyone. All right, so i got to refrigerate that now that it's open. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is whisk this. And I should have gotten the whisk out first. I'm going to lie to leave doing that. So we can mix all this together, and I'll need the whisk for later. Again, that's fine. I mean, this is all going to get combined together eventually anyway. Okay, perfect. So our next step is to combine the flour, the ground mustard, the garlic powder, and the cayenne pepper in a small bowl. Well, I have a small bowl. It may be too small. I guess we will find out. Uh, we only need, it's only, what, a quarter cup of flour, though? Yeah, okay, that's probably going to be enough. All right, that's about a quarter cup of flour, approximately. I need to throw out this uh, this measuring cup because it got cracked on the bottom. I guess I dropped it or something and forgot. That's fine. I mean, that's fine. They're cheap. It's just cheapo plastic, so. And then for the other ingredients, it is two teaspoons of ground mustard, two of garlic powder, and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. Well, the cayenne's easy because I already have the... Uh, Again, I need to open these. I gotta gotta remember. Uh, spices have to open the uh, things you have to open inside of them first. Keep them fresh. One quarter teaspoon portion of cayenne pepper. Might actually keep this one out to mix with in a little while. 
Oh, that's good. It looks like the, mac the macaroni aspect is starting to heat up a bit. That's very good. So now I need to quickly, actually, I don't even need to clean my other one, or that one, because I have a second set of little measuring utensils. So we now need two teaspoons of each ground mustard and garlic powder. I have older garlic powder that I've had for a while, so I'm going to do it first. Teaspoon one, teaspoon two. It's about one tablespoon or teaspoon. Definitely not a tablespoon. And our second tablespoon. So now that those are mixed together, uh, we have to place a large saucepan over medium to high heat and add the butter. Melt the butter and then add in the flour while whisking. <clears throat> while whisking into that mixture. Uh, I'm not going to do it that way because I'm lazy. I have the much better plan of using that mixing cup and melting the butter in that. Uh, and in all honesty, I don't care if we get extra butter because when you're from the South, you don't care about how much butter goes and stuff. If you think it needs more butter, it needs more butter. That's a number one cooking rule, or one of the major cooking rules. So I'm just gonna put like a crap ton of butter in this and probably not be good for my health. And like I said, I'm from the South, I really don't care. It's just butter, it doesn't have any carbs in it. I'm on a low carb diet, which is ironic given I'm making macaroni and cheese. Like the exact opposite of that. So once that's done, I will, and fully melted, I will meet you guys back here. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but maybe that's why it said not to heat the butter in the microwave and in the saucepan instead. That's what happens when you're not very good at cooking. <laughs> okay guys, that did not come out. Because of it like exploding in there, that wasn't really enough butter. Like, half of it came out. Now I think I see why it told me not to do it in the microwave. Lesson learned. It doesn't mean I won't probably immediately do it again and see what happens this time and hope that it comes out differently. Okay, well that's just going to end up being a mistake overall by heating it in there and being doing it the lazy way. So, I'm going to have to clean that up later, but more importantly, now that that's done, the butter is kind of melted enough. We need to add the flour and all the spices that are mixed into there and whisk them in. After that, we will slowly whisk into it into the carrot and milk mixture, aka non-carrot. So, go ahead and start adding this in. We'll do it a few things at a time, a little bit at a time. I wonder if I was supposed to put the butter into the bowl. I was probably supposed to put the butter into the bowl. Oh well. You guys wonder why the main thing I cook is spaghetti. You probably wonder that, if I've ever talked about that, that that's the main thing I cook. Okay, well, now that that's done enough, next up we combine these into the carrot and milk mixture, which is in this pot over here. It's been waiting for us. Ah, much better. It's starting to come together a bit more. You would think I'd be better at cooking being from the South, but I guess I didn't get that gene in my family. Because <laughs> I am not good at cooking. I will never claim to be good at it. Uh, the good thing is the macaroni is at al dente or more now, meaning it will be ready quite soon. Alright, so maybe this was a blessing in disguise because there's probably less butter in there now than there was. So hopefully that's a good thing in the end. You know guys, the funny thing about this whole thing is that there was actually an incentive for me to do well with this. Like, 
there was actually a true incentive for me to do well with this because this is my dinner. Yeah, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's probably not a good thing. <laughs> this is my dinner. Uh, I need to check on the macaroni, though. I don't think you need to see me boiling water and making pasta, because that's like the easiest thing in the world to cook. Actually, that's ready. Perfect. Actually, very perfect. Okay, so now we need to add in the cheese. And I'm wondering if it would be better... Yeah, uh... Given the size of the bowls, I'm going to need to just pour this into this. I'm just going to need to pour the sauce part, or the milk part, into the actual cheese, because the bowl size is better. The cheese looks nice and good, though, grated up. Uh, I do have a cheese grater, surprisingly. I actually have that. Oh, this is a lot chunkier than I was hoping for. All right. It's actually coming together quite well, this cheese sauce. That is surprisingly coming kind of well, kind of together quite well. I'm very surprised that that's enough in that pot to do this. Yeah, it's actually going to come together reasonably well. I guess the clumps aren't going to be a big deal when it's in here with all the cheese. Because so I don't have a whole lot of, like, bigger pots and pans for mixing. I've only got a couple of them, so makes some of the stuff a bit harder. You know, that actually looks pretty okay for cheese sauce. I'm actually pleasantly surprised by that. All right, so at this point, we just have to add the cooked macaroni to the cheese sauce and stir. Well, we're going to do that in the opposite way around because that bowl's not exactly big enough. I know the lighting, unfortunately, isn't as good over here. We're just going to have to deal with that, unfortunately. But uh, I think that the macaroni came out fine. I mean, it's macaroni. You can't really screw that part up too badly, I don't think. So now we pour in the cheese sauce. a fun adventure of cleaning up, isn't it? That's what dishwashers are for. Like I said though, that actually looks pretty okay. This is my dinner, so it better be good or else I'm a little SOL tonight. I have other foods laying around the house, so I think it's or the apartment, so I think it's probably okay, but still. All right, guys, so that is the macaroni and cheese. Uh, well, we're obviously not done yet, though. I still got to eat it and try it out for you guys. So I'll be back in a few minutes once we are ready to eat. All right, guys, time for the taste test. Blamco macaroni and cheese with no carrot. Let's see how it shapes up. It's actually not bad. Actually, pretty good. Uh, it's good overall, it just, it doesn't have the most flavor to it. Almost as if it could have used maybe some more cheddar, maybe some more sharp cheddar. Just something to add a little more of that taste to it. It's got a little bit of a kick though with the, uh, with the spices that were in it. And I think this came out quite well. This is good. I mean, it tastes, I, like I said, it tastes a little closer to like plain spaghetti or something. It probably could have used a little more cheese than what they tell you. Because it's only, it's eight ounces of cheddar and four ounces of Fortuna. I think it could have used probably some more of either, or maybe a third cheese type. But I'm satisfied with this. This will be a good dinner. All right, guys. Well... Uh, now you know the recipe if you ever want to make your very own Blamco macaroni and cheese. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. This one, it was a little, little bit tougher to put together, but I think it came out pretty well.
Like, I like that. I, I definitely eat that again. I mean, I love mac and cheese, so being a southerner, again, who apparently doesn't know the dangers of heating butter in the microwave. <laughs> but anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. For recipe number six, recipe number seven, whenever that comes out will be probably a drink recipe because I'm trying to alternate a bit, though I think there's more food items overall than drinks, so we'll see. So, thank you guys for watching. See you next time.